In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the principal axis of transformation. And we're really going to draw upon um, a knowledge base that we established in the previous videos, um, video 17 and 18, when we learn how to diagonalize matrices. In video number 26, we talked about similar matrices. And in videos 27 through 31, when we started dealing with orthogonal matrices. I remember the playlist for all the videos is at the website digital-university.org. Now, let's say that we have this kind of situation, something we have dealt with several times now in the previous videos, where we have an xy axis system and a vector labeled small r, another vector labeled big R. And as you saw us doing, starting in video number 27, we have a matrix, say M, and that matrix M transforms small vector R into large vector R. We know, of course, what this matrix is. So here, though, the components of vectors small r and big r, they're expressed in the xy coordinate system. Now we have another x prime, y prime coordinate system that is not necessarily orthogonal. But let's say that we know how to transform, there's a matrix that transforms x prime, y prime, into x and y. So, for example, if we know an x prime, y prime point on small, on r prime, so we have vector r, and we know an x prime, y prime point on vector r, and we want to know its xy, corresponding xy point, then we multiply by C. So again, for any point on here that's expressed in the X prime, Y prime system, multiply that by matrix C, and then that will tell you the XY component of that same point. And of course, so this takes X primes, Y primes, multiply it by the matrix C, and it gives us XYs. And of course, this will also work for big vector R. If we know some point on R that's expressed in terms of the X prime, Y prime system, multiply by the matrix C, and then that will tell us the x, y, corresponding x, y point on vector r. So we know what vector m is, and we know what, say, what vector c is. What we don't know right now is this. Suppose that on small vector r, we know it's x prime, y prime a small vector r. And then we ask, well, if we know this, so on small vector r, we know a point in the x prime, y prime system. What would be that point? What would be the corresponding x prime, y prime point on big vector r? That we don't know how to do yet. We know from here R equals MR. Here, if we know on small r, if we know an XY point, an XY point on small r, On small r, we know an xy point, we know how to get the 
corresponding xy point on big R. That we know how to do. That's what this tells us. But what we don't know how to do is if we are on small vector r and we know an x prime y prime point there, what would be the corresponding x y y prime point on big R? That we do not know how to do. We know how to go from small r to big R when things are when the points are expressed in terms of x y. But right now we do not know how to go from small r to big R when the points are expressed in terms of x prime, y prime. But from what we do know, we can figure it out from this equation and these two equations. So let's just make some room and do that. So we have this. We have these three equations. And again, what these are telling us is if I know an xy point on small r, I can determine the corresponding xy point on big R. That's what this does. Here, this is telling us if I know on either, on either vector, small r or big R, if I know an x prime, y prime coordinate, I can determine the xy coordinate. That we know how to do. Now, let's take this equation. And big R, we can express like this. And that's R prime. So big R is this, and that equals M times small r. Small r is this. So we can we have this equation. Now we have to remember both matrix C and matrix M, both of these are non singular matrices. They must have unique solutions, otherwise you wouldn't have a um, any unique correspondence between the points. So both matrix C and matrix M are unique solutions, so we have a one-to-one -one correspondence. So here, we can multiply both sides by the inverse of C. And we have this equation. So multiplying these three matrices together will give us a matrix that tells us if we know a point on R prime, we know the corresponding point on big R prime. In other words, if we are on here on small r and we know the X prime Y prime point, then this matrix here will tell us the corresponding X prime Y prime point on big R. And that's all we wanted to show. So let's just review what we did here. Go back at the very beginning. We have two vectors and we know how to transform from small vector R to big vector R with this non-singular matrix M. As you saw, I starting to do this in video uh, number 27. So what this means is that if we know an XY point here, we can determine the corresponding XY point on the other vector via this matrix. So we know that. Now, we have an X prime, Y prime system, and we say, well, here then on say for any either vector, either small r or big r, if I know x prime y prime, then by using matrix C, I can determine what x and y is. Using the same matrix, 
if I know its x prime y prime coordinates, then I can determine its x y coordinates. Matrix C takes us from x prime y prime into x y. So we know this information. Then we're saying, well, let's just take this equation, which transforms small r into big R, meaning specifically, if we know an xy point here, this will tell us the corresponding xy point on this vector. Now, let's use these relations. Big R is this, and that equals m times small r, which is this, right here. Again, both matrix M and matrix C have to be non-singular. They have to have unique solutions. So multiply both sides by the inverse, and we have this expression. So this equation is analogous to this equation. This one says that if I know an xy point here on small r, I know the corresponding xy point on big R. This one is saying if I know an x prime y prime point on small r, this will tell us the corresponding x prime y prime point on big R. And notice, again, I think it was in video number 26, when we talked about similar matrices, that this is a similar matrix. And again, I think it was video number 26 when we first introduced uh, similar matrices. Okay, now what we're going to do in the next video is consider this situation. Suppose that, again, we have an xy axis. And we have a small vector r and a large vector r. And again, we know the matrix M that r equals m r. Only now, in this case, matrix M not only is it non-singular, but it is a symmetric matrix. Now, remember, I think it was in video number 25 that we discuss properties of symmetric matrices. And I think it was video 25 specifically, we discussed their eigenvalues. And their, not their eigenvalues, but their eigenvectors. And what we proved in video number 25 is that matrices that are symmetric, their eigenvectors are orthogonal. So just writing a general expression for this, just in our two-dimensional system, suppose M is something like A, B, C, C. That's our matrix M. So this is symmetric. It will have two eigenvectors. We'll just call them x1 and x2. And the two eigenvectors are orthogonal to one another. So x1, it might be something like this. There's x1, and x2 is orthogonal to it. It might be something like this. So here's matrix M that transforms small r into big R. It's a symmetrical matrix, meaning its eigenvectors are orthogonal. So this might be 1, 
eigenvector of matrix M and another eigenvector of matrix M. Well, we could use these then to form another axis system. Instead of calling this eigenvector x1, we could just call it, say, x prime. And this one we could call y prime. Now, if we use this type of system, that is where we have a symmetric matrix and we use the eigenvectors of the symmetric matrix, the orthogonal eigenvectors of this symmetric matrix, to form an x prime, y prime axis that are perpendicular to each other, then that has special properties. And what those special properties are is what we'll examine in the next video. So that's it for this video right now. What we wanted to um, point out, or what we wanted to show in this video, is that we have x, y, x prime, y prime, vector small r, vector big R. We know how to transform small r into big R when they're expressed in the XY system. We know how to, if we know X prime, Y prime, we know how to convert into X and Y. That's what this matrix does. Then if we want to convert not R, not small R into big R, but small R prime into big R prime, then that is done with this matrix, which is a similar matrix. And that's what we wanted to show in this video. Now, in the next video, we want to consider in more detail, suppose that the vector that transforms small r into big R, not the vector with the matrix, that matrix M, if that matrix is symmetrical, its two eigenvectors are orthogonal to one another, what happens if we work with that type of system? And that is what we'll consider in the next video.